I'm going to try and do something a bit different with this video. I'm not going to base this theory off the fact that I've seen The Force Awakens over a dozen times, or that I've read and reread the novelization of The Force Awakens, or that I've read and watched everything canon and so on and so forth, again, usually more than once, or by analyzing every interview J.J. Abrams or Kathleen Kennedy has ever given, or by looking for hidden meaning in every comment Pablo Hidalgo has ever made on Twitter about Rey. Instead, I'm just going to tell you what I think makes the most sense for Rey's origin and explain why I believe that. And who am I? Well, as Rey says in that first full-length trailer, I'm no one, just a guy who has spent his entire life watching, reading, talking, and loving all things Star Wars. Now, here's the first thing you should know. A lot of people, no matter what it is, are going to be greatly disappointed by Rey's origin. That's just a fact. And yes, I know you've probably heard from several sources from Lucasfilm that the reveal was going to be greatly satisfying or something similar. But what else were they going to say about it? That it'd probably be disappointing to some fans who have very high hopes and expectations for these next two movies? Now, I've made a few videos on the matter of Rey's origin, and when I suggest she may be Luke's daughter, there are always some who reply in the comments about how disappointed they'd be if that turns out to be the case. That it'd be lazy storytelling to just make her Luke's daughter or another Skywalker. Then in videos where I've suggested her parents may be irrelevant to the overall story, I'll always get the same type of replies, that it'd be horrible storytelling, that they should make her Luke's daughter because this is the story of the Skywalkers. And then in videos where I suggest she may be something completely new and different, I yet again get people who say how disappointing that'd be, or they'd never do that because it'd be way too complex of a story to tell. And clearly, there are going to be people disappointed about the reveal of Rey's origin, one way or another. And you can disagree with me here, again this is just my opinion on the matter, but from day one, meaning the day Disney purchased Lucasfilm and started talking about this new trilogy to come, there's pretty much only been three options for Rey or their new female lead. Because what you have to understand is that what came first was the idea that this new lead or main character of this new trilogy was going to be a strong female. That was probably the very first thing established in the first meeting about these movies. And then they worked backwards from there, deciding who she would be and how the story would go roughly. And as I said, I think they've only considered three options for Rey all along. That she'd be the daughter of Luke, the daughter of Han and Leia, or she'd be no one and have humble origins and that this new strong female lead would be strong not because of who her parents were, but because of who she is and how tough she had made herself growing up virtually alone on Jakku. Now, I realized I said I wasn't going to base this theory on anything but my own opinions, but there are two books that I have to bring up not because they give hints to her origin, but because they establish the type of character Rey is and that she has become strong and self-sufficient completely on her own, and why she is so capable and seemingly good at everything she needs to be in The Force Awakens. Those two books are Rey's survival guide and Before the Awakening, and they showed that Rey, on her own, has learned to survive on Jakku and at no point hit to the fact that she does it because she is force sensitive. Instead she learned how to be a scavenger, to recognize what parts were the most valuable, and in so doing also learned how to repair ships like we see in the movie. In fact, in the book Before the Awakening, she even, with the help of two friends, rebuilds an entire ship, which those two friends end up stealing when Rey refuses to leave the planet with them. Also at one point in her life she discovers a flight simulator and taught herself how to be a good pilot and with nothing but free time on her hands she became very very good at it, explaining how she piloted the Falcon in the movie. And again with all that free time she learned multiple different languages, which is why she can understand BB-8 and Chewie. And of course growing up on a world like Jakku she had to learn how to fight or she would have been taken advantage of at every turn. And this likely went doubly so for a young woman who most probably viewed as an easy target, but who paid the price for that belief, like Unkar Plutz Thugs did in the movie. So couldn't she still have taught herself to be strong and self-sufficient and be the daughter of Luke or of Han and Leia? Sure, she could be, but it would lessen the character and everything she accomplished on her own growing up on Jakku. And I don't think Disney and Lucasfilm want to do that. Rey is strong and capable because she made herself strong and capable. The moment we find out she's a Skywalker, that changes everything we believe about her. There are those of us who will immediately say, well that explains why she can do everything she could, it only makes sense now because she's a Skywalker. And I guarantee you, going back again to that first meeting they had about this new trilogy and their new lead character, that was the last thing they wanted for her. Okay, well even if she's not a Skywalker or Solo, she'll still have a cool backstory, right? Maybe the creation of Palpatine or another coming of the Chosen One. Now first let me say, I love the idea of a Palpatine somehow being responsible for a creation. I really do. It'd be a cool direction to take the story in. But it's not going to happen for multiple reasons. First, it's the same problem we had with her being a Skywalker. 
it gives an alternate explanation as to why she is so capable and managed to survive growing up on Jakku. Same goes for a lot of the other cool theories out there, like her being a Kenobi or the daughter of Ezra or whatever else it might be. The other problem with the Palpatine theory, and a lot of other theories, is they're too difficult to explain. The Star Wars movies have always been fun action-adventure movies that don't let themselves get too bogged down by the story itself, and they've never really had deep, intricate plots or been heavy on the exposition, and that goes for both the original trilogy and the prequels, and after what The Force Awakens was, I don't think they're going to stray too far from that formula. Like it or not, Star Wars movies are not made for hardcore fans. They're made for all moviegoers. They're meant to be something anyone can go see and enjoy. And knowing that tells us that Rey's origin will make sense to you whether you've seen each of the original trilogy movies a hundred times, or if The Force Awakens was the very first Star Wars movie you've ever seen and The Last Jedi is now your second. And that's the way it should be. Star Wars should remain accessible to anyone, and Disney will make sure it does because that's how they'll make the most money from it. The very last thing Disney wants people to say about The Last Jedi is, it didn't make sense to me, and then for thousands of articles to pop up online about how the new Star Wars movie was too complex and it scares away the average moviegoer. So do I really think there's no hope for there to be a cool reveal when it comes to Rey's origin? No, I wouldn't say that at all. It's just not going to be anything like we expect it to be. My best guess is that her parents are going to be irrelevant to the story, and they left her on Jakku for a simple reason, and maybe had intentions on coming back for her and something happened to them. I think Rey herself was chosen at random by the Force to fill some role, like how everyone is chosen at random by the Force. Even Shmi Skywalker was likely chosen completely at random to give birth to the Chosen One. I think Rey's overall purpose is to help bring balance to the Force, and that something was lying dormant inside of her until Anakin Saber called out to her at Maz Kanata's castle and showed her what her destiny was to be, and I think they will go out of their way to let us know that it was dormant inside of her until that moment. All I know is that whatever it is, it's going to be very simple and easy to understand. Again, the last thing Disney wants is for people to be confused by this movie and not understand who and what our main character is and what she's supposed to be doing. I'll end this video by saying this, I love talking Star Wars, and speculating and coming up with theories and making these videos. It gives us all something to do while we wait for the next movie. I dare say it's become a big part of the Star Wars experience for a lot of fans, and it really is a form of entertainment in itself. And I know there are going to be some people that hate this video and go to the comments and point out why they think Rey will be this or that, and you know what? You might be right. She could be a Skywalker, or a Palpatine, or something else along those lines, and believe me, I hope they do something cool and unique with her. I hope the rest of this trilogy is an intricate and complex story with lots of twists and turns. But then when I really think about it, I hope it isn't. Because even though I'll love it and I'll be able to understand and follow it, and likely you will too, not everybody will. That kid who's watching his first or second Star Wars movie in his life isn't going to get it. And instead of becoming a lifelong fan, he's never going to watch another Star Wars movie because it's too complicated and doesn't make any sense. And it's not just me that doesn't want that to happen. Disney doesn't want that to happen either. And they'll make sure it doesn't. It may sound bad, but Disney knows they've got us hardcore fans. That most of us will keep going back for every movie, even if it's not what we want it to be in the future. Now sure, yes, there are some of us that will keep our word when we say we'll stop watching Star Wars if they do this or that. But they're greatly outnumbered by the new fans they're going to bring in if the story is easily accessible. And the money they stop spending on Star Wars will be insignificant to the money parents spend on kids who have fallen in love with Star Wars the way I think we all did when we were kids, and the money they themselves will spend on it for the rest of their lives. And at the end of the day, it's a simple numbers game for Disney. And the most important number to them, whether we like it or not, is the one with a dollar sign in front of it. Well, that's all I got for you this time. All too often people ask me, what do I really think Ray's origin will be? Well, sadly, this is what I really think it will be. Now, as I said in the video, this is just my opinion, so now it's time to tell me yours. What do you really think Rey's origin will be, not what do you hope it will be? Let me know in the comments below and let's talk some Star Wars. Also, please subscribe to my channel and check out some of my other videos. If you've already subscribed, then thanks for your continued support. And as always, thanks for watching.